Friends, I hope that you were blessed this week as you heard God speak a word of claiming over you when you repeated Isaiah 43, 1 each day, inserting your own name. Remember, that was how we ended our our class time last week. And that's the first step of discipleship, as we talked about it last week, to know God's love and trust that it is true. And that's key, right? We talked about this last week. We can't go any further in living a life of faithful discipleship until that reality absolutely seeps into our bones. And I want you to think about how deep that kind of knowing is. Uh, Part of what I was reading this week uh, in a different book, it gave me this beautiful metaphor of when you learned how to drive. Right, when you first learned how to drive, you had to think about every motion, every intent, every behavior. You had to think about which, which pedal to press. You had to think about which way to turn the turn signal. You had to think about how hard to turn the steering wheel in order to make the turn. I mean, right, and after a while, that just becomes so comfortable for you that it's a part of your muscle memory. Well, that's what I'm talking about here, is that this knowledge that God is good and that we can trust God and that God is good for us, right? That has to sort of seep into our bones so deeply that it becomes a part of our muscle memory. That, that's what I mean when we have to know God's goodness and trust that it is true. It has to seep into our bones. So today, as you prepare for class, I want to help us imagine the power of that realization in our lives through a practice that's known as remembering your baptism. So before I explain that to you, I want to read to you the account of Jesus' baptism from Mark's Gospel. Now you can read about Jesus' baptism. It happens very early in each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they all tell a similar version. I'm choosing Mark's version here uh, because it's the briefest, it's the shortest. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of this word for us today. So I want to point out for us, friends, that two amazing gifts are bestowed upon Jesus at his baptism. First is the gift of claiming, and second is the gift of calling. God publicly claims Jesus as belonging to him by saying, You are mine, right? You are my son. I am pleased with you before any of Jesus' public ministry. As Christians, it is our tradition that we've insisted that God was pleased with Jesus before Jesus had done anything to deserve it. Second, God gives a calling to Jesus in this moment, which is evidenced when the Spirit descends upon him like a dove. And here, <clears throat> excuse me, here's the amazing thing. We believe that God extends those two gifts to us as well in our baptism. Whenever we were baptized, even if we have no physical memory of it, God was extraordinarily present in that moment to both claim us and call us. In fact, that's why we practice infant baptism. It doesn't matter that the child can't say yes, can't respond to God's love. It's okay because God's love is the one that makes that baptism valid. And it's actually a way for us to physically uh, say in the life of the community that God loves us first. Before we're able to respond to it, it's a proclamation, right? That God's love is for us always. God calls us and there's nothing we can do about it. A phrase that I've heard to describe that is it's a soul tattoo, right? It's a mark upon us that that cannot be erased. And that is very good news. So, I want to recommend this practice to you as a way of centering yourself to know God's goodness and to trust that it is true. The shower is an easy place to practice this just because it's a part of our routine. Just take a moment as the water runs over you to listen for God's voice of claiming and calling. Hear God say to you, you are my daughter or you are my son, my beloved. 
With you, I am well pleased. Tonight, before we come together in our class, I'm going to ask you to just simply run some water over your fingers and trace the sign of the cross on your forehead. Connect with God in that moment, friends, as you feel the water cool and refreshing upon your forehead, right? Listen for God's voice in that moment and soak it up. Would God speak the same words over you that God spoke over Jesus at his baptism? You are my son. You are my daughter, my beloved. I am well pleased with you. Friends, we can only trust what we know to be for our good. I'm not talking about knowing in our minds like we know that two and two equals four. I'm talking again, remember about that knowing that happens in our gut, right? A conviction. I have a friend that says it like this. I know that I know that I know, right? It's a knowing that exists in spite of the evidence to the contrary. It's a knowing that you feel safe, trusting, God is a foundation for your world. It's a knowing that actually changes how you live your life. So we have to know that God's goodness. We have to know that God is good and we have to trust that it is true. We have to know that God created us, right? And what that means is God created us just as we are. God knows everything about us. In fact, when God created us, it's almost like God says, right? Voila! perfect. You're just what I intended. You are just what I imagined. I I believe the poem that I sent you last week after class said that, you know, God would lick the spoon of you. God would ask for seconds of you. That's how much God loves you and adores you and wants for you to be all that God knows that you can be. So as you prepare to come to class tonight, I want you to think about a time when someone believed in you. You thought all was lost, right? But this person was able to, for whatever reason, sort of reach down into the depths of your soul and they offered you the gift of being seen and loved. It's the most amazing thing when someone can see you in your deepest need, truly see you and love you, love you entirely, love you purposefully. I want you to journal then about what made it possible for you to receive that gift. I remember a few moments in my life that fit this description, and I can actually tell you how I behaved differently as a result. It was life-changing for me to have someone really see me and love me. I was transformed by that gift where they claimed me and they reminded me of my calling Do you have any memories of moments when someone saw something in you and called it forth? I want to ask you, what changed in your life because of that? So spend some time remembering your baptism. Use the water. Feel the beauty of its touch on your forehead as you make the sign of the cross. Remember, who is it that has given you that gift of of seeing you and loving you for who you are? And what changed in your life because of that? Journal about those things, and I'll see you in class tonight.